If you're looking for me from the months of August through November, I'm gonna be in one place if I'm not at my desk, and that's chasing these big bluefin tuna. Right next to us, Ali. Oh, I see him. The plan was run around, try and locate these big schools of tuna that Ollie's been seeing. I mean, he's been going out and having some really good days. Yeah, 12 o'clock, they're blowing up like crazy. Over the last five years here in San Diego, we've been blessed with this tuna bite that is, you can't really put words to it. This time around, we got our buddy Damon coming into town. Damon is the owner of Nomad Lures. What better opportunity to test out some lures throw some lures then to popping bluefin. Yeah, good bite, bite. Real, 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 real. My name is Ali Husseini. I grew up in Southern California and now operate one of the largest sport fishing websites in the Just world. Just another day at the office. My office, not yours. <laughs> I'm Rush Maltz. I got you. What you saying? Florida Keys native and career fishing guide for the past 20 years. Fish, when I come out to California, you can let me catch all the three on the pound tuna. Our passion is our profession, and we know there's more to fishing than just the catch. There's a good mark right there. That's what I like to see. That's one. He's not superstitious because that's bad luck. Woo! All right, get with him. Come with him. We explore the people, places, and species that make up the culture of fishing. You know, growing up here my whole life, San Diego is tuna town. I mean, that's what we specialize in catching here. And it's typically yellowfin tuna or bluefin tuna and even albacore in some instances. We've been invaded by these bluefin tuna that range anywhere from 10 pounds to 350 pounds. This is a cycle that hasn't happened in 100 years in our waters. The goal for us this time was to find some foaming fish, find some blue fins on the surface and throw some lures into them because we had our buddy Damon coming into town. We got some big fish around yep. that don't like poppers a whole lot. We're Excellent. gonna see if we can change that. Yeah. But I think let's start, let's kind of cut our teeth today. We got a lot of mixed fish too. Yeah. Like 15 to 100 pounds. Cool. But they are much more happy to eat a popper. Sounds I figured good. we go get dialed in on those things today. Weather's a little rough, so yeah. we're gonna keep it closer to the, to the barn. Yeah. And then tomorrow we'll go and maybe look for a big, big one. Sounds like fun. Is it all bluefin or mix? mix? Where we're gonna go. So you can catch a yellowfin and a bluefin out of the same school, or they could be 100 yards apart. But we'll just see what it gives us. The only challenge we might have today that is concerning me is the yeah. wind, man. Yeah. These tuna are so easy to find when there's no wind, and they get hard to find when it's lumpy. Well, let's get going, man. Excellent. Daylight's burning. All right, so one of the things I've been telling you about yeah. is how hard it is to make these tuna eat. Yeah. yeah. And uh, let's let's lay it on the line here. You're confident you can get a big tuna to bite it? Well, a I'm, I'm pretty confident we can get a bite. It might be a lot of casting. I mean, I've, I've seen them in other parts of the world where you got to do a lot of casting sometimes. And, you know, like I haven't seen, you know, 200 pounders, but a lot of the times, even with like 80 pounders, you can just be casting, casting, casting. You can see the fish, they just won't eat, and then all of a sudden they'll come on. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm pretty confident we can do enough casting to, to get a bite. As long as, we can, as long as we can see enough of them with this wind, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about it. But We invited Damon out, one, because we really like the guy, but two, to really show him our fishery. His lures have sold great since he introduced them here just a couple of years ago. But I think being the kind of fisherman that Damon is, he wants to see firsthand. He wants to do that field research. He wants to understand what our needs are in our market as fishermen. I spent a long time guiding uh, out on the Great Barrier Reef and seeing that there was a gap in the market really for what, we, what was available versus what we needed on our charter operation. And that's really what got things started. So, you know, some of the key things like big poppers, things that were really strong, really tough, and could stand up to big fish day in, day out. And that was really what got me started thinking about lures and lure design. Years ago, you just watch things when you're out there guiding that watch things that work, watch things that don't work, and that gets the brain ticking over about, hey, I think we could you know, make something different that's gonna work better, and it really just came from a, I guess, necessity that we needed to make things that work better. There's really only one way to do that, hands-on.
Local Knowledge is brought to you by Evinroot, fastest, cleanest, smartest. The only outboard that lets you have it all. Pen, let the battle begin. Yeti, built for the wild. Seakeeper, once you feel it, you will never boat without it. The Florida Keys and Key West, come as you are. Bubba, the ultimate lifestyle. Nomad Design, crafted by experience and by bdoutdoors.com. This time when we were out in San Diego, we had a little different weather pattern and it was going to be a little breezier than what we were used to this time of year and, you know, the weather's going to be a little bit unstable. Right now, I'm not feeling it. I'm, I'm not feeling it. It's this is uh, what we call plan B. Yeah, that's right. you got to have a plan B. I mean, it is so <laughs> rough out there. We can't hardly fish, let alone try nah. to capture it on film. The weather was uh, was pretty bad from uh, Southern California standards. Ali wasn't real happy with the forecast, but you know, fishing on the, the CV, it's just an unbelievable boat. We don't have anything like that uh, back home in Australia. And just the ride in that thing was just incredible. This is the Coronado Islands, Damon. We're about 17 miles from Point Loma. This is kind of like our go-to spot for yellowtail. You probably see us catch a few here on the show. I have indeed, yeah, it's a beautiful looking spot. Hopefully I'm wrong about today, but I'm just not feeling it. Okay. But I don't want to burn a day, so let's get in here. We're going to do some yeah. looking around, see if we can fool one on a jig yep. or a casting lure or yep. a DTX, whatever. Yeah. We've got it all going on, so we're going to see what we can find. Yeah, there's no shortage of fish, so we'll get a chance to present yep. to a few. We'll give it a few hours. If it doesn't go, it doesn't yep. go, and cool. we got to ride it off to a weather day. Let's find them. So when Ali said to come over and uh, experience the Southern California tuna fishery, he basically told me that there was going to be opportunities for casting uh, stick baits and poppers. I'm going to put a piece of 40 on here with one of those little DTXs. Foamers on the surface, so some you know potentially smaller bluefin and yellowfin tuna. Are you going long or short? Uh, let the lure master guide us. But you know, small to Ali's like could be up to 80, 90 pound fish. I would love to see some 300 pounders come out right now, uh, right in front of the boat. Go, 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 go. Go. This is all right, right? Go ahead, make some casts, yeah. They're just small fish. Uh, I saw them come out of the water about 30 pounds, Everything 20 pounds. I saw was like 20, 30 pounds. Okay. Perfect. I see them right there under those. Hit the sheer waters, Rush. Oh, yeah, look. Oh, oh. Ate it, ate it. oh. right there. That was a good fish. That yeah. was a 20 pounder. Was that that sinking? Yeah. Hit the sheer waters, right in. It's got, you got to be right in them, lead them. Oh, oh yes. Going up on that. There you go. Got him. That's what I'm talking about, guys. Nice work. <sighs> I'm going to grab another one. Fortunately, here in Southern California, for us fishermen, it's not just these big bluefin, because if it was, it would make it really difficult for the average guy to catch a fish like that. We also have our normal influx of yellowfin tuna, and the yellowfin aren't nearly as big, but man, they are so much more willing to bite, and they really do help fill the sacks of the average angler. Yeah, nice one. Beautiful. Gary was all over that little bait. So that's a 105 Riptide, that clear color. Is that the sinking one? Yeah, that's a real fast sinking one. You know, we found some nice yellowfin. They were crashing on baits. They were right where Ali said they were going to be. You know, we had some fun with them. Right there, Ali. Oh. Hit him, hit him, hit him. Right next to the boat. Who's on me? Oh, I'm on! Dude, this drag on this new reel is so smooth. That on those little fish, Damon, will just crush them. 
the thing. They love the popper. Oh, I mean, they'll eat a stick, babe, but they really like the popper. Let's see if they're around. Rutchie, can I get a gap here, buddy? Big old tuna. Nice yellow fish. Dude, that's some eating right there, Good son. Good job. Look at that. Been a while since we caught a couple of these. Yeah, it has been a minute. God, they feel so greasy out here. <laughs> hey, Damon. Sorry, buddy. Some, oh, that's what you got him on. Sometimes the old standard works. You know, we put our time in, we found some fish day one, we caught some fish on the surface, you know, we got to throw some of Damon's lures, he got to see him in action, boom, mission accomplished. Day two, it was time to reset, do something a little different, and that entailed catching some big fish. All right, Damon, so a little bit different plan today. Yeah. Yesterday we tried to find the popper fish. Yeah. We pulled a couple out of our, uh, you know what? Yeah, we, we got a little lucky. <laughs> we got real lucky. Um, we're both fishing up to know luck is better than me. Good. Exactly. So today we're going to run out to San Clemente Island. Cool. That area, and that's where the big ones live. Right. So sounds if it's fun. been biting like it has been biting, we're going to see some really cool stuff. That sounds awesome, man. I can't wait. It's really a big body of bluefin that has moved in for the 2019 season. I think from what I've seen so far this season, this is the most bluefin that we have seen through this five year cycle. Just because there's a lot of fish, it doesn't really mean they're easy to locate. Yeah. I'm fired up, man. Let's I go do tell. this. Let's go do it. Let's go. <laughs> On this trip, when we were leaving the dock, I had a really good idea of where I was going to find these fish. I think I had fished five of the seven days prior, had really, really good success. It's been biting as good as I've seen. All right, guys, so there's two ways we're going to target these big bluefin. Both of them involve a kite. So when we're kind of hunting and looking around, we're going to skip this yummy flyer. And I know I've told you about this, yeah, but we basically put the kite off the side of the boat yeah. and we go troll speed and this thing just skipping across the water. When they're high enough in the water column, like 150 feet yeah. or shallower, yeah. they'll come up and eat it. When I see them down two, 300, I don't even mess with it. This gets bit sometimes. Yeah. Lately, the game has been using the same kite, finding a foamer, and then presenting a rigged flying fish. These are giant, dead local flying fish. They're caught right here at this island at, at Catalina and Clemente, right here. Wow. There's a guy named G Fly. He stays up all night. His motto says, what does it say? We stay up all night catching these smelly or stinky bastards so you don't have to. <laughs> I'm telling you, this has been the most sure way to get a bluefin to bite that I've seen in the five years of this cycle. I'm just going to rig this guy up real quick, which is basically pin his wings out. Yep. We got a special harness that we use. Okay. 300 pound uh, fluorocarbon. Yep. Big old 10 hook in the front. This is going to go through the body, and then this one's going to go in the tail. So far, 100% of the fish I've caught on these have been with a treble hook. Wow. I hate treble hooks. Yeah. Because I just don't, I don't feel like you're hooked up as secure, but yeah. you get that in the, in the roof of the mouth or whatever, you're in pretty good shape, and you're not going to get chewed off on 300. People want to make fishing too complicated. And I kind of look back now that this dead bait is the hot thing. One of those big dead baits costs $30 right now. They're so hard to come across and they're so deadly, there's just a giant premium on them. Well, you're rigging up this bait and I'm you know, getting ready to put it out and I'm just kind of thinking about all this and it harkens back to the last time these bluefin were here. Those innovators on our coast that started the tuna club that were catching these things on linen line and reels with a leather hand drag, they were rigging up flying fish. Hey, they couldn't get those flying fish to the fish, so what do you do? You steal your kid's kite, you put it out there with the release clip, and you slide these dead baits or you very slowly troll these dead flying fish with their wings rigged out, and guess what? works as good today as it did 100 years ago. So what we'll do is if we're flying the, the yummy and we see a foamer, yeah. I'm so much more confident in this. Yeah. We'll pull the yummy in, we'll put this out. You guys will present the bait. Yep. And once we get close, you're just gonna wanna kind of skip it in. And then once it gets there, just lay it like that. <laughs> I'm, don't ask, man. Even within this dead bait technique, we put a new spin on it on this trip. While we were drifting there with the baits basically hanging from the kite, you know, gently slapping the surface of the water, we weren't getting bit. And I talked to a buddy of mine who was fishing nearby who just had two bites and he said, man, try putting the bait out and bringing it back in and repeat. Oh my God. That's a good school. 
So we'll get up here, you know, 100 yards above them. I'll turn the boat sideways. We'll get that bait out and see if we can't talk them into eating our junk. Just do your best to keep them up out of the water. Be very gentle. Don't wind hard. Oh, we went to cross oh, Let me get them up out of the water before you even... go. Just go real slow because you get bit right there, too. Really? Uh, no joke. See how it's sitting right there? That's yeah. basically what we want out on the water. That does look pretty damn sexy. I mean, it's hard to argue with, isn't yeah. it? Here they come, here they come. Coming up. We're gonna get bit, boys. Oh, right oh. there, right there, good buddy. Real, 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 real. Line, 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 line. We're tight, we're tight. What's that drag doing? It's a four. Back, back it off, back it off. Three, three, three. Yeah, good, real, 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 real. There you go. Okay, that's a rail rod, Damon. Once he settles in, I'll show you how to use it if you want to learn. Yeah, you'll love it. Local knowledge is brought to you by CV Boats, lead the way. Costa, see what's out there. Mustad, the standard in saltwater. Aftco, any fish, any water. Sea Deck, your boat deserves Sea Deck. JL Audio, how we play. Casa Vieja Lodge, experience five star angling in tropical Guatemala. The Saltwater Angler, Key West. And by Taco Marine. I mean, most American guys land these in 20 minutes. I'm just going to say that. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to start any trouble. <laughs> well, I pulled the hook within the first 20. <laughs> One or the yeah, other. You've, you've rigged up the Aussie with a treble hook and a company <laughs> drag on it. First, first thing about fishing, there's no rules and no crying. <laughs> he's hooked up. He's using some gear he's never used before. And there's something definitely different about this fish. It's big. You want a uh, drink with an umbrella in it or something there, Damon? Yeah, just a little pina colada would be a good, actually. Colada. You're our kind of guy there. <laughs> Damon's got the rail rod. We send him right to the bow. This is a technique I haven't tried on the CV yet, and man, was I happy with the results. Damon being a good angler, a little bit of coaching, as soon as he felt that rail rod load up, he knew just what to do. Use the rail of the boat as a fulcrum, conserve your energy when you've got it, and then when you have to really bend that rod and get that fish coming, he did just that. You guys ever kite fish in Australia? No, no this is the first time I've ever done it. Oh, it's really? been quite a, it's, quite it's a learning neat, experience. It? It's awesome. Like obviously you want to catch one on a lure, but seeing what you guys do and how you fish, I was pretty excited about learning how to do it. As a lure Very designer, cool. it's always the objective of going out is to see the way that these fish are gonna feed. So this deal with the kite and Ali getting the, the bait fish presented just the right way was a, a fantastic way for me to be able to see how these fish are gonna feed. So, you know, it went from catching the, the sort of smaller tuna on the, on the lures to having an opportunity to potentially see something that's just a giant tuna eating one of these surface baits. It's an interesting process for a lure designer to go through to just see how they're gonna feed in these different scenarios. Right when he comes around right here, get a crank, get a crank. Get a crank, lift, lift. He's deep. Too deep. Oh my God, that's, that, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, everybody slow down. You got him? No, come down the rail, follow me okay, down the rail. Let me, I got let, me get, let me get another gap in him. I don't know if I can hold him. Oh, just hold him. No, 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 no. You don't have gap? another gap. I want to reposition this one. Look where it is. Oh, okay, I got him through the jaw. Him? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's just let him go. So if we can get him over the rail. Oh, we can get him over the rail, no problem. Okay, Damo, put that rod in the rod holder. You need a hand? Gonna, free spool, click okay. on. We're, we're gonna, gonna come back right here. Okay. We're gonna put our legs up and get him right up and in. Click is on, free spool. Do you need, what do you want me to do? Uh, you're gonna just help us with the gas, or if you wanna get a hand. Oh, there's meat hooks in there. Open that up. Yep. Okay. No, in, right in the mouth, in the mouth, not the jaw. Now we're playing. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Now we got all the time in the world, boys. Okay. Ready? On. Here it comes. Oh, come on, come on, boy. Ah, is it? Get in there. Hold in there, hold in there. Ah. Woo! Yes! Oh my God. Woo! <laughs> that is a jumbo. Thank you, guys. That is unbelievable. Just pulling that fish over the side of the CV 
it, it, it's just a euphoric feeling. I'm super grateful to be a part of it. So I think the biggest thing that I'm taking away from this Southern California experience is, is just an overall understanding of the way that people fish in this area. Just to see the size and the power of these tuna, uh, it really allows me from a tackle point of view to get an overall understanding of the type of products that we want to you know, develop into the future. But I guess personally, this trip's just been fantastic. You know, catching a fish of a lifetime, really, uh, I just can't thank Ali enough for uh, the opportunity to come over here and experience it. And, you know, from a personal and a allure point of view, it's, it's just been an incredible experience. It was really cool to take Damon out and get him the biggest tuna of his lifetime. I'm really excited to see what he dreams up next that's designed just for our fishery. Thank you.